Hi everyone. In this series of podcasting, I am trying to deliver a summary that we can learn from each chapters of the Feynman's lecture series. In this video I am going to discuss about the first chapter from volume 2 of Feynman's lecture. The chapter name is Electromagnetism. The first thing that we can learn from this chapter is that, we can distinguish matters into two kinds, on the basis of the nature of charge, one is positive and another is negative. Like kinds repel and unlike kinds attract, unlike gravity where there is only attraction. And when charges are at rest there is only electrical force but when they are in motion they experience magnetism too, that is why we call the subject electromagnetism. But when there are equal numbers of positive and negative charges in two separated systems then there will be no attraction or repulsion between the systems. Now consider two humans are standing one arm length apart from each other, and they have 1% more electron than proton. Then the force of repulsion will be that much high enough that it can lift the weight of the earth. Next thing is, if we go to atomic level, there could be a very high residual electric field due to the unbalance of positive and negative charges. The force that holds the atoms together, and the chemical forces that hold molecules together, are really electrical forces acting in a region where the balance of charge is not perfect, or where the distances are very small. Now you may ask why the electrons and protons in an atom do not get on top of each other? It does not happen because according to uncertainty principle in quantum mechanics, when you try to confine electron and proton in a region, the mean square momentum is getting larger as you try to confine them more. So this is why electrons and protons do not get on top of each other. Now you may wonder about the protons, but inside nucleus there is an extra force the nuclear force, that held all the protons together despite their electrical repulsion. The next interesting thing is, in an atomic bomb it is the electrical energy, not the nuclear energy, that released at the time of explosion, when electrical forces overcome the attractive nuclear force. Electromagnetic forces acting on a particular charge depends only on the position the particular charge, on the velocity of the charge, and on the amount of the charge. The principle of superposition tells us that, if we know the law for the electric and magnetic fields produced by a single charge, moving in an arbitrary way, then all the laws of electrodynamics are complete. The next thing is, a field is a physical quantity that can take different values at different points on space for example temperature. One of the main assumption of the electromagnetism is that placing a charge in an electric and magnetic field will not affect the position and motion of the charges that produces the electric or magnetic fields. And there is a convention. And it is. The number of lines per unit area at right angles to the lines is proportional to the field strength. The next thing we can learn from this chapter is about the flux of a vector field. And it is defined as the average normal component of the field times the surface area. Circulation of the vector field is the average tangential component of the field times the distance around. With these two ideas we can describe electricity and magnetism at once. There are four laws of electrodynamics. According to the first law of electrodynamics, the flux of electric field through any closed surface S, is the total charge enclosed by the surface divided by free space permittivity. We also adopt the idea that electric field for a single point charge is spherically symmetric. So to keep the value of the right hand side constant the electric field should decrease as the square of the distance as the surface area of a sphere is proportional to square of the radius of the sphere. From here we get the inverse square law. The second law is, for any arbitrary shaped curve C that is for an open surface the circulation of the electric field around C is equal to the time rate of change of the flux of B through the surface S. Physically you can imagine it as, suppose you have a wire, connected to galvanometer, in the vicinity of a magnet. Now if you move the wire or the magnet then, 
a current will flow through the wire. So from this we can conclude that a moving magnet can produce an electric field. The third law is, the flux of B through any closed surface is zero. And the fourth law is discovered by Maxwell, that is a changing electric field can produce a magnetic field. So these are the four laws of electromagnetism. Now suppose you hang a current carrying wire above a bar magnet, then they will exert force on each other. And the similar thing will happens when you place two current carrying wire place side by side. When the currents are in the same direction, the two wires attract, but when the currents are in opposite direction they repel. You can replace a bar magnet with a coil of current carrying wire. That is current in a coil imitates a magnet. So it seems like that a piece of magnet acts as though it contains a perpetual circulating current. Or you can consider it as a permanent currents in the atoms of some materials that is currents are generated due to the electrons orbiting in their orbits. But in case of iron some of the electrons are spinning with their axes lined up. And this is the source of magnetism in iron. The last two things that we can learn from this chapter are. Direct contact forces are actually the electrical forces and magnetism is a relativistic phenomena. So, see you in the next video. And do not forget to subscribe my channel to get regular updates.